but it's the hardest working tree in the orchard. So for that, it fixes nitrogen. We use it as a living stake. We also use them as living posts, but they provide dappled or a light shade. They produce an incredible mulch. And then they would just start to eat the leaves next to our fruit or nut trees, in this case, apple. It serves as a barrier. Ah, I could stay here all day. There isn't a big wind today. A great day to really get the fragrance from these honey locusts. It's not overpowering. It's not really strong. It's a little subtle, but it's, mm, it's really nice. Honey locust is probably my favorite nitrogen fixing tree. Not because it's the best, because it isn't. It isn't the best. There are some that are much better. Black locust is certainly better than honey locust, but it's the hardest working tree in the orchard. Say hardest working? Trees work? Yeah, it works really well. It is a legume. It is a nitrogen fixer, although not the way most legumes. It's, it's I guess they call it more primitive version. It doesn't fix with nitrogen fixing nodules doesn't make little balls or pebbles if you like i want to show you what those nitrogen fixing nodules look like this is pretty small oh yeah you can see a little nodule there you can see another one there one in here Aha. Well, here's the white clover root. And you see those nodules right there? That's the gold. That's the prize. That's what you really want on a nitrogen fixer. Are nod it's called nodulation. It's the amount of nodules that are made. And each of those is like a little capsule of nitrogen fertilizer that then have an association with a bacteria. They actually fix nitrogen all along their roots without making the nodules. It's a different, it's a different pathway, a different process. Hey, nature is full of finding more than one way to do it. I think it's associated with Frankie. Frankie? It's actually Frankia. Go read this article for a great summary on the story of Frankia. Some of you will certainly comment on nitrogen fixing and especially honey locust, but one of the things I like about them, and this is a good example, this is a female tree. There's male and female, so the female will make flowers, obviously the male too, but the female's the one that will make the pods. I don't see a pod right here. Yeah, so it's a hard-working tree. You see the bees love it. And it is, out of the nitrogen-fixing trees and shrubs, it's the one that attracts the most insects. It's crazy how many insects can be in here. And not just bees, just beneficial insects, even flies. All the... You want to come in. I know you want to come in. Come on in. There. Oh, it's even the greenback bee. Haha. <laughs> One of my favorite little bees. So how do I say it's hard working? Well, yes, it's a nitrogen fixing tree. So for that, it fixes nitrogen. But we use it for several purposes. We use it as a living stake. Stake as in, you know, where you'd have to plant the stake. Well, we don't plant the stake. We plant the tree. And with time, it becomes the steak. So we use it to grow grapes and kiwi. Sometimes grape and kiwi on the same tree. And that's why we train branches downwards on it. You see the branches, instead of being all the way out there, actually trained down so that it's easier for the grape and the kiwi to grab a branch and head on up. 
head on up. Well, we want the grape and kiwi to go up to the sun. And so they'll grow up on it and they're really doing well. So grape and kiwi on the nitrogen fixer is a great strategy. Cause then go see the trio video. It is part of our trios. It's the nitrogen fixer in between two fruit trees or a fruit and a nut. Still have that song in my head. <gasps> Gumi! We also use them as living posts. Yeah, they're posts, living posts. We plant a lot, we, we didn't, well, we do plant some more posts, but we especially want to plant these as posts because you know what? A post gets worse every year, but a tree gets better and stronger and could be bigger unless we prune it off, but it could get bigger and stronger every year. So as a post, it gets better and it could live for a long time. So that's our goal for these. It's to be a living post where we need to attach wires, irrigation, overhead spray, any, any uses of attachment to a post. What else? They do give a nice, one of the great things about honey locust is, you see that? See on my shirt? By the way, you can even get some of these if you like. Go see in the, in the merch on the website, miracle.farm, a shameless plug of our t-shirts. But they provide dappled or a light shade. They're not, they're not, one of my, I don't hate trees, but I do know that some trees are not where they should be. And in our climate in Southern Quebec, Norway maple is a tree that really is, doesn't belong here. And mainly because they provide such a complete shade that not much else can grow under them. Maybe in the forests of Norway, they're great in the forest, but here, oh boy. Anyway, so honey locusts provide this dappled shade, light shade, it's, it's really lovely. Another thing they do is they produce an incredible mulch. The leaves, actually the leaflets, fall to the ground. And look, at, look at this, look at that beautiful mulch. Yeah, it's on the plastic here, but it, it's a really nice mulch. Oh, hazelnut. Somebody went and ate that or tried to eat that. In the years when we had ducks in the orchard, it was so funny to watch. The ducks would walk along in the orchard and they'd trample alfalfa and clover. Now alfalfa and clover is, oh my gosh, it's the amazing best, most nutritious plants you can have. And they would trample over those great plants to get to the honey locust and then they would just start to eat the leaves. First time I saw that, I thought, what are they doing? This is a duck, a duck heading into the orchard to eat leaves? Well, you know what? They knew something. And they know that these can be as a forage for herbivores or even for ducks. These can be 35% protein. I might be wrong on that, but I remember seeing something like that. And so the leaves of these are really, really nutritious and desirable and good and wanted and loved. How good are they? Yeah. Quack, 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 quack. So we use these trees next to our fruit trees. So honey locust or other nitrogen fixers next to our fruit or nut trees, in this case, apple. If you think, well, why would you do that? Well, it's not a unique or original idea. I first got exposed to it by a book, Bill Mollison's Permaculture, Permaculture, a Designer's Manual. Fantastic book. And I just devoured the book, but especially that chapter about temperate climates, because we're in a temperate climate here. We definitely have winter. And so he talked about putting a nitrogen fixing tree, a fruit tree, a nitrogen fixing tree, a fruit tree, and so on and so on. I looked at the orchard, I look at our land prices and I think, wow, half the orchard used in 
for trees that don't produce fruit, that was a hard one to swallow. So I just thought I would take Uncle Bill's strategy and stretch it a little bit. So we put a nitrogen fixer and two fruit trees. I don't have a third hand, but imagine. Nitrogen fixer, fruit, fruit, or fruit, nut. Then a nitrogen fixer, fruit, fruit, or fruit, nut. That's the idea of the trios. Go see that video, trios. And it's worked. It worked so well. Go see the caterpillar video. The caterpillars used to just be... Anyway, you... They were more than my nemesis. They were the point that drove me to the point of going, I'm going to give up. This is ridiculous. It makes no sense. The caterpillars were eating the orchard so much that, and I didn't want to spray. I had in one of the biggest organic orchards in the part of the world, but I didn't want to spray to kill insects. To me, that was just wasn't didn't make a lot of sense so I thought how do I get rid of these caterpillars it was thanks to these caterpillars go see that video that I changed to put the orchard differently and since then this combination has worked incredibly well I no longer have the problem with tent caterpillars we see them once in a while but they're more fun to see now than being a nemesis so that combination of trees, putting a nitrogen fixer next to your trees, it really works. It works mostly against insects. But one of the things about a honey locust is it serves, not just honey locust, but any of the nitrogen fixing trees and shrubs, it serves as a barrier. It serves as a block and it serves as a way to, to break away from in an orchard setting, even in your garden, to break away from having rosaceae, 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 because all our temperate fruit, cherries, plums, peaches, it's not ours, but it grows in our part of the world, pears, apples, they're all rosaceae. And that isn't the monoculture, but it they do share some of the same insects. So having the nitrogen fixer makes that the insects end up being blocked, uh, isolated, marooned, separated on an island of these fruit trees. And that has helped a great deal. One of the great things about these honey locusts, and not just necessarily every honey locust, but these, go see the video on cultivar variety to understand the difference. But these are a variety called enormous or thornless honey locust. And they will multiply from seed to be thornless. So if you're stuck with trees and you go, oh, these, these honey locusts, get yourself some seed from thornless honey locusts. Spread them all around your area, your pasture. Let them come up and you will have trees that you'll love rather than hate because of the thorns. But you know why they have those thorns? I talked to you about the, did I tell you about the ducks? Well, these are so delicious as leaves that thorns are just nature's way of saying, oh, you know what? If we have thorns, we can protect the tree. We won't get completely defoliated because otherwise, they would get defoliated. That's why the thornless ones tend to be in parks where <laughs> they're protected from all the herbivores. So if you ever see the thorns, we have a few with thorns. And one of the curious things are, often you'll see the thorns up to about eight or 10 feet high. Look at your trees and see are they thorny right up? Some of them are, but many of them only have thorns for, let's say 10 feet. Because you have to think back in time, go back, way back. When, when this area was run over with horses, yeah, North America was 
had a lot of horses and camels. No more, but that's what they had before the great extinct, one of the great extinctions. And so when those animals roamed the area and honey locust was there, if they didn't have thorns, they would get eaten. But they didn't need to provide thorns way up at the top because, well, we didn't have giraffes. You see in Africa where they have giraffes, the, the acacias have thorns right way up there because otherwise the giraffes would just completely defoliate them and they would die. So trees have learned an important strategy and shrubs, if you have gorse, you know why, strategy to avoid being eaten to death. They've got to provide some defense against those creatures or they die. So that's why they have thorns, but they don't all have thorns. Get the thornless ones and enjoy the nitrogen fixers. Here's my favorite flower. These are so good. If you've never tried black locust, now that's a tree that is a nitrogen fixer, but when it's in flower, this one is my favorite fragrance. Please don't bring your girlfriend into a place with a lot of black locust in flower. The smell is intoxicating. That's another subject. The, the flowers on these are really like little pea shoots. Did you, did you see pea shoots? And so you can eat them, add them in a salad. Mm. At this time of year now, this the end, they often have a few insects in them, so just check them before you eat them. But a great addition to your salad. But out of the trees we have, black locust tends to be the best nitrogen fixer. It is really, it's a fantastic nitrogen fixer. It's a great soil improver. It'll often grow where not much is growing. And that's what makes these trees and these shrubs one of the great soil improvers. They grow where others won't, but they can be, black locust can be pretty thorny. Take a look at this. There's the thorn from a black locust. You don't want this under your foot. And so thornless, they're a, uh, thornless would be great. You have to be careful when working with black locust, uh, just the thorniness. So that's one reason why the thorny, it's a thorny issue. It literally is a thorny issue because these plants have a defense mechanism and I wonder what we could do with these thorns. Hmm. Maybe we could use them as nails. Maybe we can I'm sure people have thought of it before. We planted these black locusts, and here's one that we planted from seed. So this is the only tree before we redid the, we put in a new seeded orchard. Go see those, that whole playlist. But these were the only ones in the permaculture orchard that we actually put in just from seed. We did not transplant the tree. We just put the seeds in and it was stunning to see within one season. So planted, they were seeded in June. I remember it was after the first, the last frost. And some of them by September grew to be two meters, six feet high. And I thought, wow, I have an apple tree here that was planted two years before and it's not even six feet high yet. So I thought, wow, these trees really want to grow. So a great nitrogen fixer. We usually prune them up. This one was pruned and we left one branch, but we prune them up just so that they're not, there's not a danger of hooking on the branches uh, and the thorns. Great nitrogen fixer, black locust, Robinia, pseudo acacia. And they spread quite easily from seed using these, ouch, using these seed pods. So very typical of a bean, the legume family again. And within there, there's a whole series of seeds. So one pod 
will give you about 10 trees. Whoa, imagine the potential of increase. Go see that seed thousand times increase. Yeah, it is a thousand times from one tree. You could get a thousand trees. Black locust. Another nitrogen fixing tree hmm, in the legume family. I don't think it's a very good nitrogen fixer because usually the point of a nitrogen fixer is it'll fix nitrogen for itself. And when pruned, it will share that goodness with the trees around or when it dies or when it's eaten by herbivores. But this one, these were planted from seed, which I expected they would grow faster. They're really not a fast growing tree. Kentucky coffee tree, Gymnocladus dioecus. And well, I'm a little disappointed in them, but you know what? Just in the growth rate, I'll see what they do with time. Be patient. Trees can take a long time. Here's one of the nicest Russian olives we have. Oh, listen to all, look at all the bees in here. Full bloom today. Look at that. And even different, that's a different kind of wasp. Oh, there's a swallowtail. And another one of the wasps. I can, oh, the smell here is, oh, it's amazing. I love when these nitrogen fixers are in full bloom. The attraction to the bees and the insects, they gotta be at peak. This is peak today. Look at all the flowers. Look at the stage they're in. There's that butterfly again. It knows when something is good. Bumblebees. You may not see that properly, but I'm just gonna go around it to show you some of the. Oh, look at that. Are you alive? Do you see this? There's a. Oh, that caterpillar <laughs> had been parasitized, it was completely dead. Oh. There's one. It's not dead. But it may, that's a dangerous place to be in the nitrogen fixing tree in full bloom with all these wasps cruising. Oh, another bumblebee. Now I'm upwind. I don't smell it the same, but the bees certainly like it. So Russian olive, and I know from past comments, some of you say, oh, that's a pest. Well, it's a pest if your soil is in bad shape. Once the soil's improved, often these trees will start being outcompeted by other trees. And I can remember a comment you said, wow, it seems like you just saved my orchard because they were trying to get rid of them. And she was so glad to just realize that, you know what, she doesn't have to get rid of them she can actually integrate them because they were growing like a weed already. She could just integrate them into her orchard plan and use them. If they grow so well for you, then please grow them. They're really doing a great job of improving, improving the soil. I'm talking, but I, I just keep getting these whiffs. It's a great day to be out here. When it's not too windy, you get the full power of the fragrance. And if you have some of these trees or shrubs, please go out early in the morning. When it's warm enough, it's got to be around 15 degrees C and higher, and the bees will be out. But then the trees really try to attract them. And fragrance is just a way to attract, not their mate, but Huh, interesting, eh? Fragrances to attract the mate. I wonder why people wear fragrances. Anyway, the trees do it to attract somebody, a pollinator, to come visit the flower and take a bit of pollen from this flower, go to another tree. 
Here's the bumblebee right there as I'm talking. Russian olive is another one of these nitrogen fixing trees. Huh, even beetles in there. Use it. If it grows well, use it. Like I mentioned for some of the other ones, look at the color of the leaves. You see that? Silver colored leaves, light colored leaves, able to grow in poor, especially drier soil. And so if your soil tends to be really dry, some of these silver colored leaf trees and shrubs will be just what you need. The one nitrogen fixer I don't have, that I should have, but I just don't, and this is knit. You go, that's not a nitrogen fixer. I know what that is. That's a hazelnut. Yeah, it is a hazelnut. But because I don't have an alder, I want to show you with this one. Alders are the best. Certainly one of the top ones. And they're one of the few that have really been researched. And there has been some numbers. And it's impressive how much alders can fix nitrogen and improve the soil. So if you're in an area where nitrogen... Nitrogen? No. If you're in an area where alders can grow, grow alder. And if you have alders on your property, here's a, here's a great little homework for you. Go dig at the base of the alder. Go dig right around the base, up to a meter or three feet from the base of that shrub or... Because alders are depending, they're large shrubs, small trees. And in Europe, there are some that are trees. They're probably elsewhere that they're even big trees, but alders are really amazing in the ones that I've seen in their nitrogen fixing ability. The soil is completely black underneath them where 25 feet away or six meters, it's not that great, the soil. So alders, if you can grow them, they're amazing. Yeah, this isn't an alder. Ooh, it's gonna have some nuts. Ha ha! Hazelnuts! So what were the things that the nitrogen fixing trees do? Well, yeah, they fix nitrogen, they improve the soil. They're great for beneficial insects. What else? They are a post. They're a living stake, a living post. They create a break in the row, in an orchard row. They provide an incredible mulch. Ah, wow. And they have light shade. So that's... That's why I call them my hardest working trees in the permaculture orchard. Please don't think that only nitrogen fixing trees and shrubs will improve the soil. Here's one staghorn sumac. I'm letting it grow in this part of the orchard in the rows to see because it's growing so well. I'm thinking it's got to be improving the soil. I would say whatever plant is growing really well is improving the soil in some way. As long as you don't continually remove it and throw it out. It really comes down to carbon capture. How is it capturing? Well, the sun is the, is the energy source. Through photosynthesis allows the plants to capture and put nitrogen, no, Yes, nitrogen in the case of nitrogen fixing plants, but in the case of plants that are just growing really well, like maybe sumac, maybe dandelion, they're helping those plants put carbon into the soil and improve the soil that way, increase the organic matter. Maybe you have plants that you don't want them to be growing, but they're growing really well. Like dandelion, go check out that video. And they're trying to improve the soil for you. Oh, great crested flycatcher. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Half trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. What was I going to say?